Welcome to worship this morning. Good morning, good morning. Welcome. What is the There. There we go. That's better. Sorry about that. Sometimes I have to um, screw it in tighter. What's the Holy Spirit up to? Anybody got Holy Spirit moments? Miss Linda does. Hold on. Where is the microphone? Time's talking on it. Uh, while we're waiting for that, um, we passed these congregational, new congregational directories around last week. So if you looked at your information and changed it last week or it was fine, you're good. But if not, or put okay beside it if it's okay. Uh, just take a look at it and verify. Oh, you don't. Okay. Okay, thanks. All right, Miss Linda. I woke up this morning and I was going to lay down for a <laughs> That is exciting stuff, isn't it? But I heard a voice say, get up, get out of bed, you're not sick. Well, I had already planned on coming, so I don't Talk think... Talk right, right into that microphone. I don't think the message was necessarily for me because I can't get it out of my mind. So if anybody here knows anybody that needs to hear that, get up, you're not sick, go to church. <laughs> I really believe I am somebody, maybe even listening, needed to hear it. But I had planned, like I said, to be here, and I hope to return every week now. Thank you. So wonderful to have you with us today. Anybody else? All right, Dave. The Good News Committee is going to have a bake sale on April the 14th after church. It's going to be similar to our soup sale, so we're going to need bakers in the congregation to bake something and then donate it to the bake sale. So this is your chance to have all the fun you want making whatever you want and you give your calories to somebody else. <laughs> it's not gonna be a sale sale, it's gonna be a barter sale. So to buy a goodie, you have to come in with something we can use in the food pantry. You pick and choose what you wanna bring and you pick and choose how much you wanna bring. My only problem is if there's one plate of ooey gooey brownies, I have no idea what we're going to do if everyone runs for it. <laughs> um, there's a sign up sheet on the bulletin board with the name and what you'd like to bring. Um, I think, too, the other thing is when you bring a donation in to, to barter for your, your baked goods that the weather changing, all the cans and bottle of goods are available to you now. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Excellent. What else is the Holy Spirit up to? You? The Holy Spirit's been talking to Miss Dawn. Watch out. Yeah, she knows what I'm going to say. Pastor, I need to do a little survey this morning. A survey? I, uh -oh. Yeah, I need to know this information. I want to show a hands of how many of you know how to tie your shoes. Show a hands. All right, all right. How many of you tied your shoes this morning? Okay. Uh -uh. Then I expect if you're not working to see all of you at quilting tomorrow <laughs> because that's the only thing you need to know how to do to knot a quilt is tie a knot like you do your shoes. It's not quilting, don't think about it as, you know, fancy stuff that people do. They, it, well, I want to tell you, Joelle and Debbie wouldn't let me get close to the fancy stuff. All they let me do is knot. <laughs> so if you know how to knot and you want to come to quilting, we'd be happy to have you. Excellent. Bring a lunch and have lunch with everybody. 10 o'clock in the morning. You can come, if you can't come at 10, come at 11. If you... Uh, we have either bring a sack lunch or uh, maybe stop at McDonald's and get a lunch or not. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. 
Um, before we go any further, I just realized I'm going to need an acolyte. So uh, speaking of, if you can light candles, you can come acolyte for me this morning because we don't have any teenagers. <laughs> Anybody willing to light candles? All right, Debbie's got it. Thank you. Uh, what else is the Holy Spirit up to? Uh, Thursday night Bible studies, our first two have been a lot of fun. Um, this Thursday we are here um, at the church in the fellowship hall, uh, and I believe soup is on the menu. There might even be some room on the sign-up if you want to bring a soup um, you would like to share um, out in the welcome area. That is 6.15 is when we, we eat, and then we'll start Bible study, you know, when we all have our food in front of us. Other Holy Spirit things. Kathy. Real quick, it's that time of year again for the... Okay, it's that time of year again. Uh, time to order the Easter flowers, make our sanctuary beautiful. Um, the cutoff is March 17th, so they all need to be turned in. So just fill out the little slip and put it in my box. Okay. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. Those slips are out in the welcome area, or I'm sure Kathy will give you one. Um, another uh, announcement. So we are, um, we have the lovely code that gets us all into the back door of the church. It hasn't been changed since before I got here, which our security company tells us is not a great policy. <laughs> so we are in the process of making a change. The old code will last for a whole month. Um, you can still use the old code, but if you ask me after church, I will tell you the new code. Um, so that we can start practicing, et cetera. So we share that amongst ourselves. Obviously, I'm not going to say it now because this service goes out to the whole internet. <laughs> I was really close. To <laughs> I, uh, it took a while. It took a while for that to sink in. I said, I'll just tell it in the announcements. The whole world worships with us, which is wonderful. Wonderful. Any other Holy Spirit things? Okay. Then we will prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the ringing of the bell. Held in God's mercy. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things, for sins only you know. Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand and sing together, How Great Thou Art. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the works thy hand hath made. I see the stars, 
I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, I hear the bird sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. But when I think that God his Son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, He bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home, what joy shall fill my heart. Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great Thou art. Then sing my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And sing my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Christ, 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 Christ,
holy God, through your Son you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles, but to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Here ends the reading. Let us read responsibly Psalm 19. The heavens declare the glory of God and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands and their message to the ends of the world where God has pinched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber. It rejoices like a champion to run its course. It goes forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Here ends the psalm. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover the G- path over of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the words that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I invite the children forward for children's time. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Good, good, good. So I'm wondering, I was thinking today, and I had a question. If you ever have big feelings, do you ever have big feelings? Yes. Yeah, what kind of things do you feel? Sometimes sad. Sometimes sad, yeah. Any other feeling words you got? Sometimes happy? Frustrated, that's a great feeling word. Yep. Excited, I feel excited sometimes. Yeah. Do you ever feel angry? Yeah, me too. Let me tell you a secret. Grown-ups have big feelings too. We're just not as good at showing them as you guys are. Grown-ups get a lot of big feelings too. And I'm reminded through our stories today that God gets big feelings. And no matter what it is that we are feeling, God understands because God came as Jesus and was a person and had all the big feelings that we have. So anything we're feeling, God understands and knows what it's like to be feeling like that. But I know that the biggest, biggest feeling God feels is love. God feels love so big for you and for me that we can't even understand how huge that feeling of love is, which is pretty cool, huh? Yeah, and a good thing to remember that none of the things that we're feeling and none of the things that we're ever doing makes God love us any less. It's always a big, big love. Cool, huh? Okay, let's pray. Dear God, remind us that you're with us in all of our big, big feelings. And remind us that you love us all the time, no matter what. And all God's children said, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. WWJD. I grew up in that time, right? I had the bracelet with the little beads, right? WWJD. This is what we thought about in youth group. What would Jesus do? So I saw a meme this week uh, that took me back to those days. If anybody asks you what would Jesus do, remind them that flipping over tables and chasing people with a whip is within the realm of possibilities. Jesus gets angry. The good news of our gospel reading for today is that Jesus gets angry. That doesn't always feel like good news because we have a rather complicated relationship with anger. But the fact that Jesus gets angry is good news because it's so very human. It is a reminder, 
like the kids and I talked about this morning, that no matter what big feeling we're feeling, Jesus has felt it. That Jesus is truly human and knows what it's like to be living in all of those big feelings. The other reason that Jesus gets angry is good news is that it means he cares. In my social work program, I took a class on couples therapy. Everybody thinks that anger, when couples are angry with each other all the time, that that's bad for the relationship. But they said the absolute worst is contempt. When you get past the point of being angry at someone because they don't matter to you anymore. When we still feel like someone is worth our anger, it's because we care. And Jesus cares deeply. Now, this is complicated because we have a problematic relationship with anger. It feels societally unacceptable, right? When somebody gets angry, we worry that they're aggressive. But it's interestingly one of the few big emotions that men in our society are allowed to feel. If a woman gets angry, you know, think about the uh, names we end up called. <laughs> you don't have to say them out loud. Anger. We Christians, especially we Midwest Christians, right? Like, somehow because we follow Christ, we're not supposed to ever get angry. Now, top it off with the fact that um, the, the anger is complicated, right? Brene Brown, my good friend Brene Brown, a researcher, social worker, public speaker, uh, says that it's a very complicated emotion, probably a secondary emotion. That when we're angry, if we dug a little deeper, we would find one of a myriad of emotions underlying it. I have a slide, please. Oh, that's far away. Anger might be fear, anxiety, frustration, confusion, grief, hurt, sadness, isolation, guilt, shame, jealousy, outrage at injustice, helplessness, overwhelming stress, humiliation, embarrassment, depression, rejection, loneliness. Righteousness. Righteous anger. So here we go. What is Jesus angry about? Why is Jesus angry? And I think Miss Dawn might have it there. In this tiny little slice of the pie, it's that little blue slice, outrage at injustice. Jesus has come to the temple to worship. This is really early in Jesus' ministry. He's come to the temple to worship, and he sees something that outrages him. Now, you want to complicate this. Um, ask any biblical scholar what they think Jesus is angry about, and they'll give you... I read one, and one, one scholar gave me a list of five or six reasons that Jesus might have been angry. <laughs> Jesus comes to the temple to worship at Passover, one of the biggest festivals, and he finds a marketplace. Now, if we put ourselves in that time, this marketplace, these people who have set up here are actually fulfilling important functions. If you come to the temple, especially for particular reasons like um, purifying yourself, dedicating a child, atoning for something, you needed a sacrifice. 
And it needed to be particular. It needed to be an animal, a certain kind of animal. It needed to be pure. So whatever that looked like as far as, you know, the sheep had to be completely white without a black spot on it, right? The animal had to be completely whole and healthy in order to be sufficient for a sacrifice. And on the other hand, these people were coming from Passover for miles and miles away. And they were traveling on foot. And so carrying everything they had with them. So if you wanted to bring a dove to sacrifice at the temple, the idea of carting that in a cage and having it still be in pretty good shape <laughs> all the way from the other side of of the country is a little far-fetched. And so you would bring your things, your goods to trade, and there in the temple they would have an animal already deemed acceptable for the sacrifice. You also needed to come to the temple to pay your taxes to Rome. And Rome was not taking a sheep <laughs> or a grain. Right? You needed Roman money. And so there were money changers, just like you would find at the airport before you visited a particular country. You gave your goods or your coin, and they gave you the Roman money you needed to pay your taxes. These are all important things that are necessary to the function of this place. Now, it turns out when somebody needs something very badly... They're fairly ripe for exploitation, right? So this group of people that was offering these services could charge pretty much whatever they wanted. And probably the poorest and the most desperate bared the burden of that fee. And, you know, if someone did manage to bring a sheep all of that way, if you really needed, you know, them to buy your sheep, maybe you could talk them into the fact that that sheep was, oh, he looks like he might have a little bit of a limp to him. Oh, he got a little dirty. I'm not sure that's going to wash off. Mine has already been, you know, my mine's already been approved by the priest, right? You could talk someone into the fact that their offering wasn't worthy enough. Some people think maybe uh, this, this whole marketplace is set up in the courtyard of the Gentiles, right? There are different places in the temple, priests in this place, men in this place, women in this place, Gentiles in this. If there's a marketplace set up in the only place that the Gentiles are able to worship, Are, is the marketplace keeping people from having access to God and, and being able to worship? Maybe the marketplace has been creeping in closer and closer into the space it should not be. In any case, it seems pretty certain that Jesus is angry about injustice. Not that his feelings have been hurt. Not that his will has been thwarted. Not that his ego is under attack like I often get angry about. Jesus is angry that these people are exploiting the poor and trying to control who has access to the worship of God. Slide, please. Another thing that my friend Brene Brown, I wish we were friends, says, and this is a little far for you, anger is a catalyst. Holding on to it will make us exhausted and sick. You ever had that? Holding on to anger that made you exhausted and sick? Internalizing anger will take away our joy and our spirit. Externalizing anger, taking it out on the people around us, will make us less effective in our attempts to create change and forge connection. 
It's an emotion we need to transform into something life-giving. Courage, love, change, compassion, and justice. This story begins Jesus' ministry. In the Gospel of John, the word comes to the world. No birth story. Once again, no birth story. The word of God comes into the world and takes human form. Jesus goes to a wedding with his mom, right? And she talks him into changing water into wine. And then he goes to the temple for Passover. And he sees firsthand what the prophets have been talking about. The exploitation of the poor, the way the leaders have been following the letter of the law, and keeping people from truly connecting with God. Jesus is reminded of the reason that he came into the world, and he gets angry. And he expresses that anger. He lets it out. And then he uses it. He uses it to move forward into ministry. He launches his work and his purpose in the world to go about reminding people that the kingdom of God is here. There's nothing in between you and God. You have direct access. Gathering in the poor and the oppressed, feeding and healing, and eventually walking to the cross. And dying. He allows that anger at the ways the world is not just, the ways that others being hurt, to lead him and move him to do justice. Jesus getting angry is really good news. It means that God sees and God knows and God cares about the things that hurt us. It means that it's okay that I get angry. But it also reminds me, it calls me to pray that God would align my anger with Jesus's. That I can let go of all of the uh, other, the grief, the fear, all the things that lead me to unholy anger but that I can allow myself to be angry at the injustice that I see around me. And then rather than dwell in it, that I can allow it to move me, to inspire me, to be courageous, to love more deeply, and to do justice. Amen. We stand and sing, let streams of living justice.
God's promise to reconcile all things. Let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. You alone are God. We thank you for the gift of Sabbath rest. Awaken the church to the mystery of your presence and give us glad hearts as we receive the good news of your deliverance. Be with our bishops. Michael, Elizabeth, and Laura. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You renew creation. Drive out those who would make the earth a marketplace. Protect forests, mountains, oceans, and wilderness areas from commercial exploitation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You judge the nations. We pray for an end to war and strife in every land. Strengthen international efforts to negotiate peace and provide aid to people fleeing from conflict. Protect our troops and teach us to care for our veterans well. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God, our help, you care for your beloved children. Comfort all who are grieving ill, afraid, in pain, or in despair, especially thou, those we now name aloud or in our hearts. Remind us that you hold each of us and those we love in your healing hand. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You oh, accompany us in our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share a word of peace with your neighbor.
Before we come to the altar, we offer thanks for all the gifts that you have given this week. Those who have used the offering box in the welcome area, those who mail their checks or use our online giving system. We could not proclaim the gospel. We could not make a difference and bring the kingdom if it weren't for those gifts, and I'm very grateful. Every week I think to myself, what did your offerings make possible this week? And uh, your offerings have purchased us a nonprofit membership at both the Lake Township Chamber of Commerce and the North Canton Chamber of Commerce. And for my time to go and attend those events, and I had events from both this week, and one of those things that you allowed me to do was to go to the Lake Chamber of Commerce awards banquet, and I got to provide the invocation while our own Craig Wellspring won the Legacy Award. So that was like a lovely evening. Yeah, right? <laughs> a lovely evening, and uh, we give thanks for Craig's gifts and the way he has used them in the community through the years, and also I give thanks for the opportunity to be there and be a part of that and pray with our community. So thank you. All of those things are not possible without the gifts that you bring through your donations and also the way you use your gifts in the world. So let us bless all of these gifts. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless the gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with a hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Holy One, who prepares us and walks with us through this Lenten journey and realigns our hearts to the things that you care so deeply about. So gather us in and join us with the angels and archangels as we prepare and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broken and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
Again, after supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. We pray together as our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. All are welcome at the table. All of the bread is gluten-free. There are wine and grape juice at each station. So, bread for the journey and a feast for hungry hearts. Come. And now we sing as we prepare for communion. Grant us wisdom, grant us courage, oh. 
Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. God's grace and understanding be with you all your days, be with you all your days. Go, my friend, and love thy neighbor. Sure grant you peace and mercy now today and evermore now today and evermore now today and We stand and sing together Canticle of the Turning.
soul cries out with a joyful shout that a God of my heart is great. And my spirit sings of the wondrous things that you bring to the ones who wait. You're fixed your side on your servant's plight, and my weakness you did not spurn. So from east to west shall my name be blessed, could the world be about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, but the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though I am strong, my God, my all, you work great things in me. And your mercy will last from the depths of the past to the end of the age to be. Your very name puts the proud to shame, and to those who would for you yearn. You will show your might, put the strong to flight, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. From the halls of power to the fortress tower, not a stone will be left on stone. Let the king be aware, for your justice tears every tyrant from his throne. The hungry poor shall weep no more, for the food they never earn. There are tables spread, every mouth be fed, for the world is about to turn. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Though the nations wait from age to age, we remember who holds us fast. God's mercy must be the from the conquered crushing grass. This saving word that your fathers heard is the promise that holds us bound. Till the spear and the rod can be rushed by God, who is turning the world around. My heart shall sing of the day you bring, let the fires of your justice burn. Wipe away all tears, for the dawn draws near, and the world is about to turn. Go in peace. Share your bread. Thanks be to God.